Welcome to the Sacred Revelations channel. Throughout history, the figure of Mary has been venerated and loved by millions of people worldwide. But how much do we really know about her beyond her role as the mother of Jesus Christ? The Christian narrative presents Mary as a woman of extraordinary faith, humility, and obedience, chosen by God for a unique and divine mission. However, many aspects of her life and legacy remain less known but equally fascinating. Before we begin, we would like to clarify that this video has no ideological bias or religious affiliation. Our goal is to present information about historical and theological facts related to the Virgin Mary without intending to cause discord or contradict any beliefs. This is a space of respect and understanding where everyone is welcome, regardless of their faith or lack thereof. So, please like, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive into the video. The Real Story of the Life and Death of the Virgin Mary From her miraculous appearances to her role in the history of salvation, Mary is a central figure in Christianity. Her name of Hebrew origin, derived from Miriam, holds a hidden meaning. In Hebrew, Mary is related to the word Mar, suggesting a connection with the sea, a symbol of grandeur, vastness, and purification. Mary is known as the Mother of Jesus, the Son of God, and her role in the history of salvation is undeniable. She is revered for her purity and grace, often referred to as the Virgin Mary, a figure of virtue and devotion. Her virginal conception and her role as the Mother of Jesus have made her a symbol of divine and spiritual motherhood. The life of Mary, Mother of Jesus, is marked by extraordinary moments that reflect both divine intervention and the historical and cultural context of her time. One of the most significant events is the announcement of Jesus' conception by the angel Gabriel, as reported in the Gospel of Luke. This episode, known as the Annunciation, occurs when Mary, a young virgin from Nazareth, is visited by Gabriel, who brings her a surprising and divine message. In Luke's account, Gabriel appears to Mary and greets her with the words, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Luke 1.28 Mary, perplexed and confused, listens as the angel delivers the message that she will conceive a son who will be called Jesus, the Son of the Most High. Gabriel explains that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her, resulting in the conception of Jesus, who will be holy and called the Son of God. Mary responds to this revelation with humility and obedience, saying, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word, Luke 1.38. This act of faith and submission by Mary is essential in Christian theology, representing her complete trust and cooperation with God's plan. The Annunciation marks the beginning of the fulfillment of the Messianic promise and God's direct intervention in human history through the incarnation of His Son. Mary is seen as the new Eve, whose obedience contrasts with the disobedience of the first Eve, bringing new hope and redemption to humanity. Regarding Mary's age at the time of marriage and the Annunciation, the historical and cultural context of first century Palestine suggests she was very young, possibly between 13 and 15 years old. This was a common custom in Jewish society at the time, where young girls were often betrothed soon after reaching puberty. While Mary's age may seem surprising by contemporary standards, in her culture, this practice was established and acceptable. Mary's youth is also significant from a theological standpoint. Her purity, symbolized by her virginity in youth, is often emphasized in gospel narratives and church teachings. Furthermore, her young age underscores the depth of her faith and courage. Accepting such a crucial role in the divine plan, knowing the potential risks and misunderstandings involved, requires a spiritual maturity that transcends her physical age. The cultural context of her time also provides a broader understanding of the role of women in Jewish society. Despite the limitations imposed on women, Mary's story shows how God chooses and elevates the humble and marginalized to fulfill His purposes. Mary, a young woman from a small village, becomes the mother of God, a title that places her in a unique and elevated position in Christian tradition. In John's Gospel, a passage of profound importance concerning Mary occurs during the crucifixion of her son. 
John 19.25 describes the scene with poignant simplicity. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. This verse not only underscores Mary's presence, but also highlights the solidarity among the women who supported Jesus until the end. Mary's presence witnesses the suffering and death of her son, participating intimately and personally in his pain and anguish. Many theologians view this participation as an extension of the yes given at the Annunciation. Just as she accepted the role of the Mother of God with faith and obedience, she now accepts the agony of seeing her son sacrificed, demonstrating a faith that remains steadfast even in the darkest circumstances. Furthermore, Mary's presence at the foot of the cross is often interpreted as a symbol of the Church. In John 19.26-27, Jesus, seeing his mother and the beloved disciple, says to Mary, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. This act of entrustment is seen as a moment of profound theological significance, where Mary is given to humanity as a spiritual mother. This forms one of the foundations of Marian doctrine, which sees Mary not only as the mother of Jesus, but also as the mother of all Christians, a role she continues to fulfill through intercession and maternal care. The crucifixion is the climax of the mystery of salvation, and Mary's presence reinforces the human and divine dimensions of this event. She not only witnesses humanity's redemption, but also uniquely participates in it. Mary's presence at the foot of the cross silently testifies to her acceptance of Christ's redeeming suffering. The image of Mary suffering with Jesus resonates with Simeon's prophecy who had foretold that a sword would pierce her soul, Luke 2.35, indicating the suffering she would endure as part of her role in the divine plan. Mary, as the sorrowful mother, becomes an icon of compassion and spiritual strength, inspiring believers to find meaning and hope even in their most painful experiences. A curious fact about this passage concerns Mary of Clopas, mentioned in the New Testament. In John's Gospel, Mary of Clopas is cited as being present at the foot of Jesus' cross, alongside his mother and Mary Magdalene, John 19.25. This passage suggests a close familial connection, but the exact interpretation of this relationship remains debated among scholars. The mention of Mary of Clopas as the sister of Jesus' mother is a significant point of interest. In the Jewish culture of that time, the term sister could encompass a wide range of familial relationships, not necessarily indicating a blood sister. Some scholars suggest that Mary of Clopas could have been a cousin or another close relative of the Virgin Mary. This interpretation is strengthened by the fact that having two sisters with the same name would be highly improbable, suggesting that the term sister should be understood more flexibly. The name Clopas also appears in another passage of the New Testament, in Luke 24, 18, where Clopas is one of the disciples who encountered Jesus on the road to Emmaus after the resurrection. However, the connection between this Clopas and the husband of Mary of Clopas is not explicitly established, leaving room for additional speculation. Various ecclesiastical traditions attempt to elucidate this relationship. A popular theory is that Clopas or Cleopas could be identified with Alpheus, mentioned in the Synoptic Gospels as the father of James the Less, one of the apostles. If this identification is correct, Mary of Clopas would be the mother of James the Less and possibly other brothers of Jesus mentioned in the Gospels, who could be his cousins rather than blood brothers. This discussion leads to a deeper examination of biblical references. In Matthew's Gospel, the brothers of Jesus are mentioned, including James and Joseph, Matthew 13.55, whom some believe to be the sons of Mary of Clopas. This would create an indirect but significant link between Mary of Clopas and the Virgin Mary, placing them within the same extended family structure. Speaking of family, we cannot overlook how the lineage of Mary and Joseph, both descendants of the house of David, became a crucial element in the biblical narrative. The genealogy of Jesus, detailed in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, emphasizes the importance of the Davidic lineage, seen as a necessary condition for the promised Messiah. Matthew presents the genealogy of Jesus starting with Abraham and tracing the line to Joseph, the husband of Mary. 
This lineage includes important figures such as David and Solomon, highlighting Joseph's role as Jesus' legal father and thus legitimizing his claim to the throne of David. Through Joseph, Jesus inherits the legal rights and continuity of the house of David, fulfilling the expectations of the Hebrew scriptures that the Messiah would come from this royal lineage. The evangelist Matthew underscores this point by writing, An account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, thus establishing a direct connection with the promises made to Abraham and David. On the other hand, Luke offers a genealogy that many scholars interpret as that of Mary, beginning with Adam and tracing the line to Jesus. This genealogy also includes David but goes through Nathan, another son of David, instead of Solomon. This suggests that even biologically, Jesus descended from the house of David through Mary. Thus, Luke establishes that Jesus, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, possesses a divine lineage while maintaining a legitimate connection to the lineage of David through Mary. The dual presentation of these genealogies highlights Jesus' messianic legitimacy in two ways, legally through Joseph and possibly biologically through Mary. This dual descent reinforces the idea that Jesus fulfills the Old Testament prophecies predicting the coming of a Messiah from the lineage of David. Isaiah prophesied, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Isaiah 11.1, 1, pointing to the continuity of the Davidic lineage. Similarly, Jeremiah declared, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Jeremiah 23.5 The significance of the genealogies of Mary and Joseph goes beyond fulfilling prophecies. It also highlights God's sovereignty and faithfulness in fulfilling His promises throughout generations. The fact that Mary and Joseph both descend from the lineage of David is not merely a historical coincidence, but part of a divine plan to establish Jesus as the legitimate Messiah. This connection not only validates Jesus' messianic identity, but also emphasizes the continuity of God's covenant with Israel and humanity. In Christian theology, Mary plays significant roles that transcend her historical figure as Jesus' mother. Two prominent roles include Mary as the new, Eve and as the Ark of the New Covenant. The comparison of Mary to Eve dates back to the early centuries of Christianity and is based on typological parallels between the two women. Eve, as described in the book of Genesis, is the mother of humanity who disobeyed God, leading to humanity's fall into sin. In contrast, Mary is seen as the new Eve who plays a crucial role in humanity's redemption through her obedience and cooperation with God's plan of salvation. Just as Eve is considered the mother of all fallen humanity, Mary is viewed as the mother of redeemed humanity through her son, Jesus Christ. Her response of faith and submission to the angel Gabriel's announcement is seen as a reversal of Eve's sin, restoring trust and communion between God and humanity. Furthermore, Mary is often compared to the Ark of the Old Covenant, a sacred object in the Old Testament that contained the tablets of the law, manna, and Aaron's rod. Just as the Ark was considered the place of God's presence among the people of Israel, Mary is seen as the vessel who carried in her womb the incarnate God himself. These typological comparisons emphasize Mary's central role in salvation history and her importance as a model of faith and obedience for Christians. She is regarded as an exemplary figure of virtue and humility, whose life and example inspire the faithful to draw closer to God and walk in paths of righteousness and grace. While the Bible does not provide explicit details, Mary's death and assumption are topics of great importance in most Christian religions, especially in the Catholic and Orthodox traditions. The Dormition of Mary, also known as the Falling Asleep of the Virgin, refers to her physical death, while the Assumption refers to her ascent into heaven in body and soul after death. These events are closely linked in Christian tradition, reflecting the belief in Mary's uniqueness and holiness as the Mother of Jesus. 
The doctrine of the Assumption of Mary asserts that after her death, Mary was taken up into heaven by God in body and soul, without experiencing the corruption of the body as mortals do. Although this doctrine is not explicitly mentioned in scriptures, it is grounded in apostolic tradition and apocryphal writings such as the Transitus Mariae. The Assumption of Mary was officially proclaimed as a dogma of faith by the Catholic Church by Pope Pius V in 1950, affirming that the Virgin Mary, after completing the course of her earthly life, was assumed into heavenly glory in body and soul. Mary's legacy in the Christian faith is profoundly enduring. As the mother of Jesus Christ, she embodies virtues such as faith, humility, obedience, and unconditional love, serving as an inspiration for generations of believers. The titles given to Mary reflect her maternal intercession and care. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Queen of Peace, Mother of Mercy, among many others, each highlighting a facet of her intercession and care for humanity. Mary's journey is an endless source of inspiration. From the announcement of Jesus' conception by the Archangel Gabriel, to her presence at the foot of the cross and her assumption into heaven, she faced extraordinary challenges with courage, trust, and submission to God's will. Her unwavering faith and total surrender to the divine plan shine brightly as examples of how to live a life of love and service to God and neighbor. Mary reminds us of the importance of trusting in divine providence, even in difficult circumstances, and of seeking reconciliation and peace in all our relationships. May we follow Mary's example, opening our hearts to receive the divine and living with compassion and love in every aspect of our lives. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment with your thoughts. May God bless you and see you soon.